One, now it's working. Lights, camera, fraction. Right. So, so the last few days we've been talking about equations, right? We started with one step equations. Then we started with two step equations. Then we went to distributive property equations, which would be three step equations, right? Now we're going to talk about equations where the variable is on both sides of the equal sign. Okay? Both sides of the equation, that means the other side, on each side of the equal sign, there are variables. So let's just try one and just see what we do. So what's our first example? We have 2x plus, I don't know, 10 equals x minus 7. So there's our first problem. You guys see how, here's my equal sign. So on a balanced scale, think about it, a balanced scale is very much like an, equals, like an equation, right? An equation means this side is exactly the same as this side. This side is exactly the same as this side. Therefore, they're totally imbalanced, right? If this side was heavier, it wouldn't be imbalanced. It would not be an equation. It would not be this side equals this side, right? You see what I'm saying? A balanced scale is a perfect example of an equation. I know, since that says equals, I know this is equal to this, right? Now, you cannot solve, well, you can. You can use guess and check. You can always guess and check and figure out, okay, we'll try one, and then it doesn't work. Or we'll try two, and then it doesn't work. Or we'll try three, and it doesn't work. And eventually, we'll find the right answer, right? But by just keep plugging in, guessing and checking. But in terms of actually using a process, like that's what we've been talking about, finding this process that you're going to use that's useful, we want to have all the x's on one side of the equal sign. You do not want to have x's on this side and x's on this side. You want them all on one side. And if they're not x's, they might be w's or they might be z's or y's. It doesn't matter. But I use x's a lot, so I just say x's. I mean variables. All right? I notice I have an x here, one x here. Is that really one x or just x? It's, it's, it's one x. Both. 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 It's one x and x. It's both, right? Yeah, x is the same as one x, right? You don't always say one apple. You might say here's an apple, right? You don't always say here's one apple, but an apple is one apple, right? An x is one x, right? There's always a hidden one right there in front of the x in case you ever need it for something, right? So what I like to do is I want to either move these x's over here or this x over there. Now, it works either way. There's nothing wrong with doing it either way. But let me just show you. Don't write this down. Don't write this down. If I subtracted this one from here and I drew my line, tell me what would I get? Over This would cross out, right? That would cross out. What would I get here? You get negative 1x. I would get negative x. But I don't want to solve for negative x. I want to solve for x. You follow me? Yeah. I would rather keep my x positive if it's possible. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. So instead of it's it's I mean it's possible. I mean if you got negative x equals something, you can adjust it. You can multiply both sides by negative one to get it be positive x equals whatever, right? So it's just that you'd have to do an extra step. So the quickest way to do it is to keep x positive. Does that make sense? Yeah. So instead of doing that. I'm going to, my suggestion is look at the, the, the x's. There are two of them here. There's one of them here. They're both positive. I would like to choose the smaller number of x's and move them over. That's the smaller number of x's. It doesn't say plus, but it is. It's positive because it doesn't say minus. So I'm going to subtract x, right? So I go minus x, minus x. And I put it underneath the x's, right? I don't put it under the 7s or under the 10s. I put it under the x's. I draw my line, and then I do the math from left to right. Okay, two x's minus an x. x. Or two apples minus one apple is just one apple, or one x. Or x, right? Mm -hmm. And then I say plus 10 equals, those crossed out, right? Negative 7. Oh my gosh, now it's easy. Easy, easy, right? 
It's just a one-step equation now. I subtract 10, subtract 10, draw my line, and I've got x is equal to negative 17. What did you send in? Sorry? Well, because don't have two Ah, remember that rule, though. That's for multiplying or dividing. It's not two negatives make a positive. That's not the rule. The rule is a negative times a negative equals a positive, or a negative divided by a negative equals a positive. There's no times or division here. It's just adding. I'm combining, meaning I'm adding them. So it's a negative plus a negative. Oh, okay. Right? Negative plus another negative is going to be negative. You keep the sign and you add the numbers. Right? Remember that? Right? That's the hardest part is remembering all these rules. Once you get it down and you really know them well, it's going to be a piece of cake. But in the beginning, they're a little hard. Okay, let's try another one. Wait, shouldn't we check the answer? Uh, we can check it, but I'm running out of time. But you can. So 2 times negative 17 would be... Um, Negative 34, right? Negative 34 plus 10, so negative 24. And then negative 17 and negative 7 is negative 24. So then I could, you know, you could plug this in if you wanted to, right? But for now, I'm not asking for you to check necessarily. I just want you to show me all these steps in your solving, okay? So let's try another one. I'm running out of time, so i got to kind of do this kind of quickly. So uh, an example, let's see. How about we say 4x minus um, 6 is equal to 2x plus, um, I don't know, 20? I know. Okay. So which one, there's 4x's over here and there's 2x's over here. Which one would I deal with? Oh, yes. The smaller one. So I'm going to, that's a positive 2x, so I'm going to do a minus 2x. And I'm under this 4x, I'm going to do minus 2x, right? I want to see it on both sides, because that's following the golden rule of algebra. It says whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. And then suddenly that gives me 2x minus 6 is equal to 20. Because these cross out, right? Now it's easy, right? Add 6 to both sides, add 6. Draw my line. I've got 2x is equal to 26. And now 2 times x, the opposite of times is, di is divide. Divide by 2, divide by 2, x is equal to 13. Try to put your answers in a box, by the way, a box or a circle or something, an oval. It really helps a lot. Was that number 2? That was number 2. Let's do number 3 over here. Let's say I did something like this. 2 times 3x plus 4 um, minus 2 equals, um, I don't know, 2 times 2x plus 1 plus 4. That looks a little scarier, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Right? I wouldn't want to do that in my head. So I'm going to definitely, but I do notice, here's my equal sign, and I see there's x's over here. And I see there's x's over here. They're not on the homework. They're not going to be this hard, just so you know. But 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 you guys know how to do this. Is my point, right? And so let's do it. So I'm going to do my distributive problem. So two times three x is six x plus two times four is eight minus two equals two times two x is four x plus 2 times 1 is 2, plus 4. All right, now I'm going to add my like terms before I move things around. What do I have that are like? Aren't these like terms right here? Yes? And these? Okay, so let's rewrite it. So I've got 6x plus 6, right? Am I right? Equals 4x plus 6. Am I right? Okay. So now look, I'm going to subtract my 4x's, subtract my 4x's, because that's my smaller number of x's. You writing this down wrong? Okay, good. Okay, so 2x plus 6 is equal to 6. Now what do I do? Subtract the 6, right? Because I want my x's all by themselves. That gives me a 2x is equal to 0 
Hmm, that's interesting. Oh my gosh. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Divide both sides by 2. 1x or x is equal to how many times does 2 go into 0? Zero? 0. 0 times. Right. Oh x equals 0. Whoa! Yeah, it does. No, it does because 3 times 0 is 0. So you didn't have the x. You're not going to it's actually four. Exactly. It makes sense. It, it actually makes sense when you look at it. Up, when you look at, at it down here, right on this line, look at this. 6x plus 6 equals 4x plus 6. 0 plus 6 equals 0 plus 6. X would have to be 0, right? Yeah. So that's it. That's, anyways, so that's basically it. Does anybody have any questions before I end this lecture? Yes, Bo. So, um... Are we going to have anything like number three on the lock? Um, there is, there are a couple on the, there, uh, actually there's one on the back that's sort of like that. Okay. But um, most of them are just straightforward. Okay. And I'll, I'll make sure this lecture gets posted today. I apologize about yesterday, Erica. I'm so sorry. I, I wrote you guys an apology note, but I completely um, spaced, spaced it last night.